Um, so I was just wondering, because I'm working from home um, a lot, yep. um, are there any particular desk chairs or brands that you would recommend for when you have pain with your upper back? Because I just find that there's a lot of um, choice and uh, I just don't even know where to start. Yeah, that is very true. There is a lot of choice. Um, and yeah, it's, I mean, I'd, I'd love to know the stats on how many types of chairs there are. But my, my view is you definitely get on without arms, you know, armrest, because that means you can't kind of get into the table. Um, and what we want is actually you to rest your arm on the table, table, or well, arms on the table, on a wrist rest ideally. Um, because what that's going to do is take away the weight of your arm uh, onto the table, which means the upper trap and all of these neck muscles don't have to work for 40 hours a week holding you up. Um, whereas if you've got the kind of the arms that stop you from kind of wheeling yourself in, um, I, I think that's a, a bit of a design flaw to be honest. Um, and the second one is make sure you can get it so it's adjustable and never get a fixed one because everyone's different. Mm -hmm. Having a fixed one means you can't customize it. Um, but equally, you know, I've, I've helped people who just didn't want to get a new chair. You know, they've got this know, kitchen chair. And what we did was assess them, designed a kind of a couple of pillows and a couple of towels rolled up into, into their chair um, was specific to their problem. Um, and it, you know, that was just as good as getting a new chair. Um, so unless your chair is really bad, then try moving every 20, 30 minutes first before getting a new one. Um, but um, and it, it, even the wheels as well. I'm not, I'm not even sure I like the fact that, that all desk chairs have wheels because it means you're never kind of solid on the, on the floor. So get ones with a lock on the wheels um, as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool, thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. So I've got another question. Um, I have on-off shoulder pain and can't seem to work out what makes it worse or better. Um, so on-off shoulder pain, I can't seem to, okay, so it's difficult to work out the kind of factors which are causing the problem. So is there a way of working out? There's definitely a, definitely a way of working out. What I like to call it is the, is the kind of dials, the, the kind of factors or the variables which are going to be impacting on this kind of boom-bust cycle. Um, like the ones that we've talked about, so the sleep, stress, diet, maybe not diet, but, um, you know, physical um, factors, so you know, how strong, how, how mobile you are, um, time you spent in sitting, um, and how the rest of the body moves as well. Um, because, like I said, the neck, neck is the tip of the iceberg, so sometimes we can release someone's you know, foot and it can improve their neck range of motion because there's just a, such a strong relationship with the whole of the body. Um, so it would be a case of looking at the rest of the body as well. Because sometimes we can assess people and they've got a perfectly healthy neck, but their upper back is re really too stiff. And some of the other muscles maybe around the pelvis aren't, aren't so in, in, in the best you know, position, um, which we address, you know, without even looking or, you know, without even touching the neck or doing any exercises for the neck. Um, and that we can still get the same results. So, um, so there is definitely a way, um, not one I can kind of be like, do this on the call now. Um, but, you know, pay attention to the factors that we've, that we talked about today. Mm -hmm. See if you can find any kind of, you know, anomalies. No, or, you know. You know, you Sorry? Sorry? Oh, yeah. Ed, Ed, can you hear me? It's too... Yeah. Yeah. I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I couldn't work out how to get a message through to you, but okay. uh, I have got, you know, neck movement problems, but I wouldn't say my neck is my real source of pain. It, it, it's stiff, but it doesn't sort of give me as much pain as it has done. Right. Um, I've got problems with my knees and my uh, back, my lower back. Mm -hmm. uh, which is, uh, I know it's a weak point because I used to lift things when I was working and I'm 70, more or less 75 now. So obviously, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly weak. So it, it's easy to lift something and then mm -hmm. create a, a problem with my back. So, and my posture is, I think I read something in your email about posture and, 
all, all my kids uh, take the mickey out of the way I stand because I'm a bit of a question mark uh, stance, you know. So, yeah, there. if there's anything you can do to help me on that, that would yeah. be great. Definitely, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, with lifting, I would always say just delegate it. So just don't do it. Uh, mm. You know, if, if lifting equals back problems or neck problems or knee problems, just try and not do it. Um, there's a thing called Task Rabbit, which you can just employ, you know, people on with a click of a button and they can just do all the heavy lifting for you. Um, and, you know, posture, you know, we talked about in the, in the talk, everyone's different. You know, there's people I've seen and, you know, people I've seen who've got the, you know, textbook kind of bad posture, but, you know, I know them as relatives or whatever and, and they're perfectly healthy um, and don't have any issues. So. Um, we might find another reason why the neck is irritated or why the back is irritated, uh, which is be beyond the posture. So we might not be able to change the posture. So you might still get a bit of stick from, uh, from your family. <laughs> um, but we also might, you know, we might be able to, be able to help, help and, and alleviate some of the symptoms. Sometimes when you have had symptoms for a long time, it can be tricky to completely get rid of them. But if we, we you know, if you were to have the tools to keep it in check, and you knew how to kind of, you know, the do's and don'ts for your specific injury, then it gives you a bit of peace of mind and almost gives you back a bit of control, basically. Um, so, uh, so we might not be able to get, get, change the posture, but it might not be that important, actually. Uh, so you can just tell them that next time they, uh, they bring that up. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Okay, yeah. thanks. No Thank worries. You. My pleasure. Okay. On a bit of a roll, we've got the questions coming in. Um, <laughs> have we got any more questions? Um, okay, so another one that comes up is there's all these devices. Ah, oh, I'm just going to just let this person in. There's, this, there's these devices which you can kind of see on social media and they you kind of lay on top of them and they kind of like rock you back. And supposedly you can use them for 10 minutes a day, twice a day, and they get rid of all sorts of problems. But Anything where you see an advert um, for a product um, which has, has kind of wild claims, um, just completely ignore um, because it's, you know, there, there's no research for it. Basically, Physio is one of the few kind of back pain solutions or neck pain solutions which has you know, 50 plus years of evidence to back it all up. Um, but those devices are just... Um, Basically, someone someone's had an idea, made it, and and it's now selling it on the internet, and they're just just a complete waste of time and money. So uh, uh, I would avoid those. So we've got another question coming in. Um, so can neck pain spread to earache and and headache? And if so, what does that indicate? Um, yeah, there's a couple of things. I mean, sometimes we can get what's called cervicogenic headaches. Typically, they're on one side. Uh, in fact, they're always on one side and they'll sort of spread over this kind of, this sort of distribution and the upper cervical spine, the top of the neck is where the kind of diagnosis is or the pain is coming from. Um, and it can be quite severe and quite nasty. Um, but again, we want to fi find out why that is. So it might be, again, something completely far, far away from the neck, which is causing it, or it might be a behavioral thing, or it might be something which, you know, someone's doing to to cause the issue. Um, so for example, take some time. So, so one of the things I've, I really studied was, was or during lockdown was, was that I told everyone to stop bird watching. Okay? And that's because if, um, if we you know, sit in this position, basically, um, basically the, the upper back is rounded, okay? And we need to look forwards. So to do that, uh, you need to have your eyes facing forwards. Um, if we straighten the upper back, then in actual fact, your neck is in extension. So your neck is actually looking up and it's bird watching the whole time. So anytime you're here, it's effectively like doing this. Uh, so that's the kind of thing which would really irritate your upper cervical spine. Um, and then pain that might go into the ear would be more of a um, again, a more of a kind of 
unique kind of type of neck, neck pain, um, which might be called like trigeminal neuralgia, which is much more severe. And it's where some of the nerves uh, in the top of the neck get, get pinched and irritated and can sort of refer into the, the ear, which can be very, very, can be very severe and quite, you know, quite painful. Um, so that's again, a lot more rare, uh, a, lot, a lot rarer, but again, that's the diagnosis. We want to know why that part of the neck is irritated um, and take a step back and about, you know, go all the way back to why um, the problem's there, basically. Um, I think. Um, okay. So, a couple more questions. Um, so, I'll just keep firing out some of the common ones that come in, uh, you know, that people ask. Um, one of the common questions that people ask is, um, you know, should, does it help to, to, to kind of massage it myself? You know, should I just do that? Um, and it, again, it's a form of pain relief, basically. It's, it's kind of a way of um, giving yourself temporary pain relief. Um, it's the same as if someone else does it, but in a way, sometimes, you know, in, in some cases, I've had people who've gone for massages with a neck problem and have actually been, because they've been, not assessed, it's actually made the problem, you know, a fair bit worse because the masseuse has been kind of working into the wrong areas. And actually this person in particular had a kind of pinched nerve, so there was neck pain referring all the way down into the arm. And this kind of masseuse just kind of basically, you know, doubled his pain and um, really, really caused a lot of problems because he went for a massage innocently, um, thinking it would help. Um, but because that masseuse didn't have the kind of skills to assess you know, through no fault of his own, um, it, it basically really flared his symptoms up. So uh, self-massage, self you can't, can't really go wrong with, can't, can't really go too far wrong with, but going for a massage for an hour with someone who's not going to assess you sometimes when you've got a genuine problem um, is a bit of a risk, um, which is again, um, why you know physio and massage aren't really you know aren't really the same thing really because physios are, are trained to get to the root cause whereas masseuses you know again are more for wellness so they're going to keep you well and they're going to do the blanket treatment which you know feels good um, but uh, you know if you've got a genuine pain and a genuine problem then physio is a, a safer choice for sure okay so unless you've got any more questions um, okay cool so. If, um, if you like the sound of you know, the talk and you feel like you wanted to have another chat with me, then there's the option to do what's called a free discovery call, which is basically where um, we sit down either face-to-face -face or probably more likely uh, over Zoom. We do like a 15 minute or 10 to 15 minute kind of um, chat where we'll talk about your goals and we'll um, figure out a plan of how to kind of help you and that session's on the house. Um, you can, I've just, I've just put in the web, web form there. Um, and that session we created this because we kind of, you know, think it's fair to meet the person who, who might be helping you with, the, with their particular problem rather than paying for something you're not really, you know, the whole try before you buy concept is, 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 is what we're going for there. So um, it's a chance for you to kind of find out for yourself if, if you think working with me is something you want to do. Um, so all you need to do is fill it, fill it out and then in the next week or so we can book in a, a, a 15 minute kind of discovery call which is on the house and we can talk a bit more about your specific problem and then I can share with you what your treatment plan might look like um, and then we can go from there. All right. Well thanks a lot for attending today and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Make sure you get some sun and I'll, uh, I'll see you again soon hopefully. Okay. All right. Okay, take care. Have a great day. See you later. Thank you. That was great. Okay, you're welcome. Bye-bye.